Hi, and welcome to the lesson, How to Find Your Birth Chart and the 12 Houses of Astrology. So let's start on the right foot. Our birth chart is a soul map. And the way we understand how to navigate that map is by looking at the 12 houses within our chart. And in this video, this is what we're going to be looking at. We're first going to be looking at how to access your birth chart, and then we're going to be looking at the 12 houses. This is meant to be a simple lesson, not complicated. You can be a beginner and this can be a refresher course. The important thing here is that you understand how the stars are affecting you personally. And this is what the houses do. And if you don't know me, my name is Josette Leblanc. I'm the founder, head teacher and head energy worker at Intuition Immersion School. If you like this video and it feels right to you, please click like and also subscribe to the channel because it really helps me with the algorithm. All right, so let's get started. We're going to go to astro-charts.com. This is a great website because you don't have to log in. You don't have to add your email address or anything to get your birth chart information. What you're going to need to get started is your birth date, birth location, and birth hour. Now, I know not everybody has access to their birth hour, so I'm adding a link in the description by Chenny Nicholas, and it's an article on how to find your birth hour, and I hope it helps you. And the reason why it's important to have the birth hour for this tutorial is because without the birth hour, we can't locate the different houses. So if you don't have your birth hour, it's going to be a little challenging to follow this lesson. Okay, so here's my information. This is not my real birth information. So you've added your information here. Then we go to create chart and there it is, a beautiful birth chart. Okay, down here you can see a little bookmark uh, icon. You can save it if you wanna log in, you can do that and you, you can save your information there. If you scroll down, it also gives you a great snapshot of your birth information, your birth chart. We're going to keep it simple for this lesson. Before we start, I would like you to go to settings and go to houses, and you're going to change it from Placidus to whole signs. I'm not gonna go into a description of these different house systems, but we're going to use whole signs because it simplifies things. You can see here, there's the outer part of the wheel and the inner part of the wheel. The inner part of the wheel are the houses. You go from one, to 12. It starts at 1 on the left side here and revolves to 12. On the outside of the chart, these are the zodiac signs. You can see that. You can see that each zodiac sign connects to a house, right? Within the wheel, so between the zodiac signs and between the houses, you can see some symbols here. These represent the planets. So this is a snapshot of where the planets were at the time of birth. Okay, so we're going to be exploring more of what that means. So again, the houses are what make astrology personal. At the moment of this recording, the sun is in Pisces, Mercury is in Aries, the moon is also in Pisces, it was just a new moon, and eclipse season is coming, okay? Also, Pluto is in Aquarius, this is happening on this date. It's same on the day of your birth, there was a certain configuration of planets. But the important thing is to know that what is happening today is what we're experiencing on a collective level. And what happened on the day of your birth is the blueprint of the energy that was alive when you were born. So how do we connect the collective energy of today to the personal energy of who you are. This is the magic of the house system, okay? So this is what we're going to explore. So if you want to know how the energy of today affects you personally, we need to look at our birth chart. Some people call it natal chart. If we want to know how Mercury, Pluto, the eclipses are affecting you, we need to find out where the sign is on your natal chart. So again, right now, Mercury is in Aries. So we want to find Aries in your natal chart. So if we look at this example here, 
we see that Aries is connected to the 12th house. We're going to be exploring what the houses mean in a minute, but it's important to just look at that quickly. So we know two things. Mercury represents communication. We also know that Aries represents boldness, courage, and it's a very fiery energy, very courageous. Okay. If you don't know what Aries means, then you can just Google Aries energy and you'll get a quick snapshot. Okay. So we know Mercury represents communication. We know Aries is bold and fiery. So we can imagine that communication is going to be fiery and bold, right? That's the collective energy. But for me personally, if this is my chart, Communication is going to be fiery in relation to the 12th house. So the houses represent the wheel of life. They represent experiences and the beginning and end of our human life. And if you're watching this as a lesson in Intuition Immersion School, I've given you a chart to describe the different aspects of the houses. And right now in this video, we're going briefly going to go through all the different houses and what it means. And we're going to be looking at what does it mean Aries in the 12th house with Mercury there. What does it mean? So to describe each house, I referred to Stephen Forrest's book, Inner Sky. And that's what we're going to be basing the information of each house on. So the first house is the house of personality, the house of first impression. In the first house, this is where you find your rising sign. And it's also called the ascendant. So if you've ever heard of the rising sign, this is where you find it. So you can see here, uh, my rising sign is Taurus. Again, if I were using this chart, my real rising sign is Sagittarius, but for this chart, it's Taurus. You can see ASC that represents ascendant. So that is our personality and first impressions. So the second house is the house of money, anything to do with finances and safety in that way. The third house is the house of communication. The fourth house is the house of home. So home and security, right? The fifth house is the house of creativity, play, childlike expression. The sixth house is the house of responsibilities, skills, and health. The seventh house is the house of re relationships, partnerships, contracts. So any, con any contract with somebody in your life. The eighth house is the house of death, life after death and sexuality. Uh, so anything to do with life after death, the occult, this is the eighth house. The ninth house is the house of wisdom, philosophy and travel. The 10th house is the house of career, long-term goals and status. The 11th house is the house of community, groups and shared visions. And then the 12th house is the house of the subconscious, karma, and really spiritual and psychic experiences, as well as the idea of ego death. So it's very much a house that we experience the older we get. So you can see that the whole wheel, the lower houses are very much connected to the beginning of life, how we communicate, how we feel, find our safety within our home, and then houses in the upper uh, half are related more to later in life, career, philosophy, our personal experiences of life. So there is a connection to our daily lives and our whole life in general. So again, Mercury in Aries. All right, so let's look. Mercury, Aries in 12th house. So <laughs> this might find me, I might find myself at this time communicating sub about the subconscious energy of my life, passionately exploring what makes me tick, what needs to be released in terms of my ego and communicating that in the world. Now it might not be as much as an outward communication as it is an inward communication. So Mercury is communication. It means inner, outer, especially during uh, retrogrades. It's about inner communication and reflection. And so this is a tricky one, really. 12th, 12th house, Aries and, and Mercury. Let's imagine that Aries was in the second house. So the second house represents money. Mercury in there, in Aries, 
that means we're going to be communicating about money and our finances in a very passionate way. Maybe we're going to be organizing things in a way that we haven't organized it before. Or maybe we're going to be making some serious money moves in a way that we haven't before. And that's because Mercury is instigating us to take some bold action thanks to the energy of Aries. Okay, and that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please click like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much.